But then came the South African Grand Prix and they produced and showed the T4, which was the latest Mauro Foggeri design. They've been testing it at, at Fiorano, of course, but it came to South Africa for its first public appearance, which is a great circuit on which to do that because you can do so much testing in the week before the race. And that's where, if we can start running the video, that's where we now join Gilles and Jody in the Ferrari 312 T4s, basically putting lots and lots of miles on them around Kailami in the build-up to the race. There's Jody in the car. The big question mark was the Renault Turbo. There was there were two of them now in, in the 79 season. Jean-Pierre Jabouille had let to, let, yet to lead a race. The car being been very unreliable. It was still the old Renault, but it was obviously going to be good. Nelson Piquet there, he's got his full season ahead of him now. Brabham Alpha just hangs a tail out on the Brabham BD48. Another shot of Jody in the T4. The jury was out of whether it was a good looking car or not. Personally, I kind of liked it. There were lots of curves on it, but equally, Autosprint weren't very kind. There's Mario struggling with 79 at the end of its development, not running much wing as you can see, and not being very quick anyway. Reutemann, Carlos Reutemann having his year at Lotus, having driven for Ferrari, big understeer there. And there's Gilles on the pit wall actually chatting to yours truly, having a bit, I'm not sure what I'm showing, yeah. uh, some load of old rubbish, but anyway, we had a laugh about it. There's a long shot of the straight. I think that's uh, one of the shadows, probably Elio. Jack Lafitte behind him in the Ligier, as James Hunt, who switched to Wolf, goes past in the Wolf. All this is from testing and, and practice to build up to the race, and you can get a feel for what South Africa is all about. You've raced there, I think, in um. Yeah, yeah. There's only some of the corners are still the same, but the rest is so different, and it's such a nice track. They should use it in single seaters. It's incredible track, really. Even yeah, the new well, one, it's not as good as the old one, but it, it's really, really good. Really, it's, really it's just had this massive long straight, and just to listen to the engine note as they went past in the pits was just brilliant. We saw Gilles getting in the T4 there. There's Jacques Lafitte coming in in the Ligier. He's a bit perplexed now because he's won those first two races, and then there's Pete Evans in the background, very nice Goodyear engineer. I think he's spying actually, because I think he um, he was involved with he was involved with one of the with the Lotus team as well. Anyway, no problem. Um, Carlos, speaking of Lotus, says Carlos Reutemann, not looking very happy with his 79. But Ligier, going back to Ligier, of course, the first thing they did was change the car, try to get lighter bodywork on the JS11, and it started to flex. But they didn't know that in Kyle Army, and they couldn't understand why the car was much less consistent than it had been. There's Colin Chapman with his shirt half unbuttoned, very different from the Colin we used to see in the mid 60s. But there's Mario and Carlos, great team, actually, if you think about it. The Lotus in green after years in black and gold, and before that, Gold leaf colours. Clay Regazzoni being strapped into the 06 Williams. Nicky, I'm just sort of grabbing who all these people as Nicky and Nelson Piquet following him out in the Brabham Alpha. And Jean Pierre Jabouille whispering to his new teammate Rene Arnoux at Renault. As we go back to Nelson, who's delighted to have a full season of racing with Brabham. And of course, he would inherit the number one driver as Bernie directing things, as you can see. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> Carlos Reutemann's got, it's got Carlos's attention too. Oh, we better listen to Jack. Yeah. Here we go, Jackie. Well, they're called ground effect vehicles, always new names for, for new designs. Uh, I think this has obviously contributed greatly to the increased uh, speeds here, and of course the, the times are much, much faster than they've ever been before here at Kailami. I think uh, the car's really are very nice. I, I've driven the wing car, and I think it's very little different to drive than the normal conventional car. It's just that it goes around the corner that little bit better, but certainly they're robust, they seem to be strong, and, and so far they've been showing up very well for uh, mechanical reliability. Jackie looking very Jackie in his feeler shirt. I think this is a close-up of the Lotus 79, lots of work. It's unusual in green, Martini sponsorship, Mario not happy. Oh, well. What is this white thing, sir? That's uh, what they call um, medical air. It was basically an airline um, in case the fire extinguisher went off so you could breathe um, yeah. medical air inside the helmet. It was a big thing in Formula One for a while. Patrick Depaye having a laugh. He's enjoying his time at Ligier, as you can imagine. Such a great car. He would win the Spanish Grand Prix in a few weeks' time. As we cut back to Jacques Lafitte, and I think we've got some audio from, from Lafitte as well, which I recorded relatively recently about his feelings for the JS11, and that's Pete Evans, as I said, yeah, he's a Ligier, good year guy. And why they weren't going so well after Argentina and Brazil. 
when you first drove the JS11, the Ligier, Adrika, Adrika, did it feel beautiful? I stopped after three laps and I said to Guy and Gérard, I finally I understood why the, the Lotus was so quick. <laughs> oh, it was incredible, it, the change was. The problem as the season developed, I think, was the skirts and also flexing of the chassis. Yeah? The, the problem was only this thing. When we go back from Argentina, Brazil, we, we fix a new, a new body car, bodywork, with this wing. But it was so light that it was deformed. When I was quick and when I stopped. So and the gist of what Jacques is saying there is that Guy Ligier was very upset that the Choulet wind tunnel started to do work with Alfa Romeo and presumably some of the Ligier drawings went to Alfa. He had a million franc bill to pay to the wind tunnel and decided not to pay it. Result of which Ligier couldn't do any wind tunnel testing for the rest of the <laughs> They kind of lost the plot. Nice little beautiful. You see the early turn in there is Jacques yeah, Lafitte. Yeah. That was quite characteristic of Jacques driving, even though he had a bit of a moment in the middle of the corner. Um, and there's, uh, there he is again. He was so good to watch when he was really on it really really good driver very like John Alesi in his early turn in and was very underrated I think as a racing driver in general so Nicky Lauda there his own brand sunglasses he would retire from Formula One before the end of the year just into the Canadian Grand Prix after one day's practice there's a Mano Kuogi with no shirt on his uh, mechanic that he took from Ferrari obviously he was great uh, in the middle of the relationship with Alfa Romeo and helped a lot there. But Nicky not impressed with the power of the engine here in South Africa. It couldn't live with the Ferrari flat 12. And that was the main difference, really. That Ferrari, Brabham was struggling with power all year and reliability as it happened. And it was a terrible season for Nicky Lauda. There's me again on the left. I'm trying to talk to Gilles here. And he, I think he wants to talk to me. But Marco Piccinini in the Michelin cap is trying to drag Gilles away as ever. I'm asking... Difficult questions, probably. <laughs> James Hunt uh, in the Wolf, didn't have a great year in the Wolf and qualified midfield in South Africa. There's Jody leading Ricardo Patrese in the Arrows. He has a nice slide coming out of the corner. Don't see that very often. Oh, big shunt for Elio De Angelis going into Crowthorn. Looks as if something probably broke in the back of the shadow, left rear. He gets out. You see the catch fencing that just was everywhere in Formula One then. And, and it was great in some respects, took a long time to repair, it was expensive. Plus, there was a chance of getting hit by one of the wooden poles. But in this case, of course, Elio's fine, not very happy, but he has a similar shunt in the race, sadly. But he finishes his year going really well, finished fourth in the US Grand Prix for Shadow, really good drive in the wet. Jacques Lafitte, uh, looking really confident, actually waves his hand there. He's still in practice, but then he's putting up a hand signal to thank those two guys for letting him pass. You don't see that very often in Formula no, One no. today. The driver's much more polite than they used to be. Really quick, nice section of road there. That's not, I, I, you use a bit of that track, I think, in the modern circuit, but it's not as it was. No front wing on the Brabham's, which is very typical of the Gordon Murray car. That Why was that? Well, they didn't need it. They had so much downforce, and it was a way of, of getting more top speed out of the car. As I say, they weren't quick on the straight. They were quite disappointed with the Alpha V12 power uh, relative to Ferrari and even Cosworth. So they were doing all they could, and they just set the car up with enough downforce not to, to, to run front wing. Ferrari had that really unusual nose and were ducting air through the front there into the side pods by that front wing. There's Jean-Pierre Jaboui, Patrick Tombe climbs out of his McLaren M28, pretty disappointing car, the ground effect car McLaren at the start of the year, and it didn't really get any better. They improved it a little bit, but it wasn't the great ground effect car that it should have been. Another nice shot of uh, James Hunt in the Wolf, followed by Jaboui in the Renault Turbo. And Jaboui, very keen to prove that he's as much a racing driver as that package relies on turbo power, Michelin tires, and a great Francois Castang chassis. And in this race, I think he proved that. This was maybe one of the best races Jean-Pierre Jaboui ever drove. He, he's getting in now into the car, going out for the race. He took the pole, which was not that unexpected given how long the straight was in South Africa and how high the altitude was. But you'll see in a minute what he does off the start line. It is absolutely amazing. The V6 
Renault Gordini turbo engine, twin turbo engine, really nice little compact unit, very good for the ground effect shape. Renny Arnoux joining the team, a two car team for the first time at Renault. And a nice looking team as well, well run, very French, but a big shunt for Didier Peroni in the Tyrrell. And Brian Lyle there on the right, one of the engineers having a look, not very impressed with what he could see. There was no report of anything having broken on the car, I remember, when that happened. And we just assumed that it was DDA, who was always on the edge. He was very Roman Grosjean-esque sort of driver. Uh, Roger Hill not looking very happy either there. But uh, Patrick Depaillet wearing his GPA helmet, which mm -hmm. was an unusual French helmet, which unclipped underneath the chin front and back. But Gilles later switched to GPA, actually. There he is with his bell helmet. James Hunt with a small opening with his bell as well. Alan Jones still in the 06. Williams and Ligier cut to Nicky Lauda. These are shots of all the drivers getting ready on to get out of the grid for the start of the race. So we have Jabouy on the pole. Jody Schechter qualified second alongside him as we follow, I think, Mario out. There's Carlos in the Lotus 79. Jody goes out in the T4. The crowd loved Jody. He was the local hero, of course. Nelson Piquet, who we think of so often as a number one driver, but he was, of course, the junior number two to, to Nicky Lauda there and had to give one of his sets of qualifying tyres to Nicky. <laughs> Would you believe? They're supposed to get two each, but Nelson only ended up with one and Nicky Lauda had three, which was one of the reasons he is on the second row there for Brabham Alpha. So there's Jabouille on the pole. Jody gets the jump, and you can see Jules made quite a good start down the inside as well, and they come over the crest, and Gilles is on the inside. Jabouille's moving to the left to go to the outside. Schechter thinks he's got it fully covered now. He's got the inside run into the first corner. Jody Schechter, the crowd hero. And look at Jabouille, stays on the outside, runs around the outside of Jody Schechter, stays with him. We don't see it, but he stays with him until they get to clubhouse, around the outside, and is leading as they finish the first lap. So I think that shows how good a driver Jean-Pierre Jabouille was. Correction, racing driver Jean-Pierre Jabouille was. Around the outside of Jody Schechter in South Africa, doesn't come easy. And that was one of the most impressive bits of driving we would see all year. But suddenly, within a lap or two, it starts to rain. Jabouille massively in trouble with the turbo, of course, leaving the two Ferraris in front. They're tiptoeing around, going very, very slowly. Visibility is absolutely terrible. Nobody had thought about this. Nobody had predicted the rain. It just suddenly happened, as it does in, in South Africa. And the race is red flagged. It's only two or three laps old. It's not raining very much at the start finish line, as you can see, but nonetheless, they're going to stop the race and everybody's going to come in and switch to wet tyres. You can see a little bit of the spray coming out the back of the cars. But Jody Schechter has already decided, as Hans Stuck in the ATS, Schechter has already decided that the grip in the wet on the Michelin slicks is so good that if there's any chance of the rain easing off, he's going to restart on slicks, whereas Gilles is going to start restart the race on the Michelin wet tyres. Ferrari splitting their options. That's the ATS, the yellow ATS. Sorry, that's the Renault uh, getting its Michelin wet tyres. And there's Jared LaRousse looking very cool, the team manager of, well, the team principal of Renault, as we'd call him today, looking at the slicks on Jody Schechter's car. And of course, Gilles gets all the grip off the line now. He's on the pole and he gets the grip off the line in the wet, on the wet Michelins. And he pulls away at about two seconds a lap. It looked impressive, but... Talking to Gilles later, he, he kicked himself at this point of the race for not actually going a lot quicker. He was holding the revs back. He was braking early. He knew he had a big advantage. He wasn't going to do anything silly, but he wished that he had had a much bigger lead when the track started to dry, and it was obvious that he was going to have to change to slicks. The lead wasn't big enough. And uh, and there, there goes John Watson in the Marlborough McLaren. Bit of a moment there, but he rejoins relatively Okay, Patrick Tombe in the other car there going round. So Kyle Army starts to dry out. There's Gilles still leading the race on the wet tyres, pulling away. But Jody Schechter, amazingly good in the Ferrari, holds P2 on slicks. So it's kind of all done and dusted at this point. Jody's driven so well on those slicks that he's bound to win the race when Jill has to come in to change to dry tyres. A very slow pit stop for Carlos Reutemann in the Lotus 79. He also has brake trouble, so a terrible weekend. Or Lotus with the aging 79. They put all their effort into the Lotus 80, but that wasn't a car that was ever really going to do very well. It did well in its first race in Spain, and that was about it. It went from bad to worse. So great, uh, great disappointment for Lotus. A shunt here for Jan Lammers, who's now one of the major 
players of the Dutch Grand Prix, relaunch of the Dutch Grand Prix as we're going to know it in Formula One. But Jan, very good racing driver in his own right. He's just shunted with Hector Rabak there, his Lotus 79 being pushed back into the race. That's the 70, the original 79 chassis one that Mario used to love more than any other car, the 78 car. Uh, but Jan Lam is out of the race with his shadow. There's Gilles, still on wet tyres, but very annoyed that he's going to have to come in and switch to slicks. And uh, a nice bit of movement there from Reni Anu in the Renault. Nice overhead shot here. That's Crowthorn corner. They break at the end of the long straight. The tightish right-hander then down the hill through that very quick right. Sadly, it was the bottom of there in 1974 that Peter Revson lost his life testing in the shadow, hit the guardrail on the outside when the left front uh, bolt broke in the suspension. So here's Dodi Schechter now leading the race easily because Gilles had to come in for dry tires. Here's the second chance for Elio De Angelis. The car's back the other way around now, the shadow. Not a great weekend for Elio, but as I say, his season would get better. Here's Gilles climbing through the field now, leading the pack, bit of opposite lock in the middle of the corner. And he gets to within four seconds of Jody Schechter. He's much quicker because he's on fresher tyres. But Ferrari have said, if you are near Jody, stay within four seconds. And it, the same would have applied to Jody at that point. They didn't want the two drivers racing. And Jill, being the ethical sportsman that he was, stuck exactly to that. But then guess what? Jody, Jody's tyres went off. He flat spotted the tyre. He had to come in, change to another set of dry tyres. And Jill Villeneuve inherited the win. Well, won the race, actually. Won it really well, given everything he'd done that weekend and won the South African Grand Prix. He's waving to the crowd there. Jody Schechter recovered brilliantly to finish second. So it's a Ferrari 1-2 with the 312-T4. There's the crowd in front of the podium. They're all shouting for Jody, but there's Gilles Villeneuve. Doesn't get much better than that. Gilles with the Michelin cap. Podium ceremonies weren't terribly organised back then. It was pretty free-for-all, but why not? It was a lot of natural... Energy coming out. Jean-Pierre Jarrier on the right, driven brilliantly for Tyrrell to finish third. Really good in the wet, too. Great drive by Jarrier. Jill sprays the champagne, as you would. Jarrier nicks the bottle. Probably another bottle going to materialise pretty quickly. And coming up in a second, we have sound bites from the winner of the race, Bill Villeneuve. How was the race otherwise? Super. The car was fantastic from the start. The tire were holding perfect and I was just cruising. Uh, so that's your second Grand Prix win? Uh, was yeah. It, uh, was it an easy win, would you say? Uh, yeah, fairly easy, yes. So the, when everything is, is, is fine like that, tire and car, I guess it's quite easy. They, I bought it from the, the only car I bought from the, fact, from the factory or from a team. Yeah. Or from Enzo Ferrari? Yeah. Did you get a deal? $80,000 paid. Which has got to be the deal of the century now, I would have thought. Yeah, everything goes up, but yeah, listen, it was not about money. It's, it's, um, it's something, especially, you know, here, uh, 40 years since I won the championship, in that car with Ferrari. And he... Jody, any thoughts of Gilles in this weekend and that relationship you had that year? Yeah, I mean, every, a lot of people asking. You know, Gilles always been more popular than me in in in, in that in in a way. So, I, um, you know, Jill and I were friends. I, I did, people talk to me. I don't think we ever had a bad word in the two years together. I don't think we even had an argument in two years. I remember after Dijon when he, you know, when he had that stuff and everybody thought it was great. And I said to him, I couldn't say, it's, it's wrong what you're doing, you know. You're going to keep yourself doing that sort of stuff. It's not, because in those days you did, which, you know, you did a year or two later. Well, I knew better than most how close you were because I did that amazing trip with you and Jill from Monaco to Maranello in your chocolate brown GT400, remember? You came back with me when you we went to... Back? I, in the tunnel, in the, the tunnel. Yeah, I, was, I went up with you and back. Yeah, because there was a car parked in the car tunnel. We were doing like a hundred and something. Exactly. And I went, I just got missed it. Yeah, and Gilles said afterwards, you missed the apex by about three inches, Jody. What's going on? 